All right, welcome back to episode two of Career Bound. For the first few episodes, now that we've kind of introduced the new podcast and everything, we're going to be covering like common career questions that that we get a lot from you know students that are in Praxis, um, you know college students, high school students that we're interacting with and talking to about you know what are the best ways to approach their their career as they get going in the real world etc. And today we're going to start off with the big one. The big one being, do I need a degree to be successful? Um, this is probably the most common question that we get when people are checking out Praxis and just trying to figure out like, hey, do I actually need to go to college to, to do the things I want? Um, you know, I think most young people They've, they've been told essentially their whole lives, like a college degree is absolutely necessary to, to kind of unlock the, the most valuable long-term opportunities. And, you know, I think for those that, you know, have a little bit of that entrepreneurial spirit, have a growth mindset, um, they're not always satisfied with, with college being the, you know, be all end all of, of their own success. And they're, they're actively looking for you know, other ways to build a career that they're going to find fulfillment from. So, um, Mitchell, what are, what are your initial thoughts? Like, how do you respond to that question? Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to use the, the, the common cop out response first. Okay. And, and, and I think that it's important to start here to, to get a little bit clear about the definitions here. So short answer, it depends. It depends on, on whether you need a degree or not, or whether a degree is sort of the right um, a, one of the useful tools on your path to like, whatever it is you're trying to, to, to achieve. I think first it, it's a matter of like success along what lines, like what, what game are you trying to play? If you're trying to become a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, like that's the easy thing. Like there are certain paths that you're probably going to be better served by going and following the traditional path. But for the majority of careers, and the majority of um, probably common definitions of success, a degree is is, is really just unnecessary in, in terms of like the ingredients that add up to success. So if you want to think about like uh, financial success, is a degree a prerequisite to make a lot of money? Absolutely not. There are tons of ways to make money to build personal wealth, build generational wealth that don't require a degree. Um, if you want to think about like other forms of success. So um, relationship success with, in your relationships and building, uh, you know, your fam, your family, your friendships, a happy marriage, being a good parent, like th these other forms of success that people define. Um, do you need a degree to, to have success along those lines? Absolutely not. That's that's silly and preposterous to even think about um, that when it comes to like career success. It's really a matter of like, what are you trying to accomplish? And I think part of the the nuanced way of, uh, of asking this question is like, am I going to reach a ceiling at some point in my profession where not having a degree prevents me from being able to ascend the next step of the ladder? I think right. most times the answer is absolutely not. Um, outside of like, if you want to be a CFO or sign tax returns at a high level, um, maybe a, a few other sort of uh, career paths that require some type of uh, certificate or, or certification. But the vast majority of career paths, the vast majority of sort of upper echelons of success really don't require a degree. What they are looking for is like evidence of exceptional ability. Um, I think really the degree, the most important part is like, it's, it's, it's at the start of your career. This is where it's most important. And, and it doesn't have to be an important thing at all. I think one way that I like to think about it is like, um, it, it's kind of like you're, you're trying to get invited to the party first at the start of your career. You're trying to get invited to the party. A degree is one way is one form of an invitation. Um, having skills, having an introduction from somebody else, um, uh, being able to like get your foot in the door by, building a remarkable portfolio and, and getting that in front of um, the right person. Like there are different ways to get invited to the party. A degree is one of them, but it's absolutely not. I would say a degree isn't in, unless in very rare cases, um, a degree is not a full invitation to any like career party that you're trying to walk into. 
it can be part of an invitation where it's like, hey, you know, I'm a recent college graduate. I, you know, got my degree in this. And I've also have done these other things that, you know, will prove to you that I can bring, you know, value to your company. Like that's, that's the typical story of a recent college grad. It's never the degree on its own yeah. that allows somebody to access certain, certain careers. So that's like, that's bare minimum. Um, you know, one, one thing, I'm, like the theme that I'm drawing from what you're saying is first, like, think about your career journey from like first principles, like define, you know, it, success can be defined in many ways. Like, um, you know, do you want to optimize for, you know, the highest earning potential in the first like five years of your career over other things like, you know, fulfillment and interest in what you're doing on a day to day basis, surrounding yourself with a certain, you know, type of yeah. or caliber of person, et cetera. Like all there's a lot of variables that go into like what is going to be the right career path for yourself. Um, my my big issue is that we have, you know, essentially have encouraged young people to put the college degree and answering that question of should I go to college or not before they're figuring out what they want to do career wise. So it's, yeah. it's seen as the default option. You it's the absolute bare minimum stakes you need in order to access any type of like career that has legitimate upside and potential to it. Um, and, and so I think that's where, a lot of like young people get really caught up. It's like, well, I've been told my whole life, like this is an absolute bare minimum that I need to have in order to, you know, have any chance of building a successful career in life. Yeah, a a absolutely. And so I think it's, it's also just, it's such a high risk, um, high risk bet to make in terms of like the, the actual cost of, of getting there. And, and then like, the you're sort of starting from behind not only in in the amount of time that you um you forfeited like you could have been getting better experience but the actual financial cost now you're on the other side of it you're you're like sort of making up for lost time and if you you know took out student debt to fund your degree like you're you're starting from <laughs> you're starting in the hole financially now you have to overcome that i think i think we all grow up hearing um, I heard this and I <laughs> surprisingly, I've never heard any, this number has never changed even, you know, from when I was hearing it at a young age, it's like college graduates on average are, you know, can expect to earn more than a million dollars people than people over the course of their careers and people who don't have a degree. Um, I think that that's part of the anchoring here. People think, you know, do I need a degree? Well, what am I going to miss out on by not having a degree? And I think that's like just the wrong way to think about it. The truth of the matter is, the degree is part of the signal, like what you were saying, like when you're first starting out in a career, anytime you're on the job hunt, you're trying to access opportunity. What you should be doing is thinking about manufacturing the strongest signal possible to the other parties that you're trying to get to agree to give you an opportunity. A degree is could be part of that signal. It's not required. Um, you know what I mentioned earlier, like evidence of exceptional ability, having a, a strong uh, track record, like you know, you have work history, you've got several years of relevant work experience, maybe you have a really strong referral from someone the hiring manager knows or respects or something like that. Like there are all these different sort of components of manufacturing a strong signal. A degree is one among many different things that you could you could put together. But once you're in the game, like once you've you've had success, uh, that initial success early in your career, the degree is not the strongest signal anymore. Um, in, in many cases, it's it's far less valuable the farther along in your career you go. And I think that, that people don't realize this um, before they're making decisions about education is that your work history and these other things you do, um, especially once you start your life, those are credentials too. Um, you, you go like the, the, the track record of companies you've worked at, the job titles you've held, the, the projects you've worked on, the things you publish on your own, like those are credentials that people can look to that are uh, part of the signal that you're manufacturing when you go in and interact with the market and try to find opportunities. Yeah, once, 
let's say like if you fast forward your 10 years into your career and you're you're thinking about like okay what are my qualifications what are the formal and informal credentials that i have to access you know let let's say you're in you know like just the business world at large you know you're you're doing sales you're doing marketing etc at tech company startup other other kinds of businesses uh, let yeah let's say you're a marketing professional you're 10 years into your career you're looking to take a big leap to becoming like the vp of marketing at you know a fortune 1000 company that's that's like you know pretty pretty substantial career path there um what do you think play like what weighs into the decision on um, one of those fortune 1000 companies to hire you you know your your marketing degree that you got you know at 22 versus the collection of work experience that you've gained in various marketing roles over the first you know 10 years of your career your your actual formal credential of that that a college degree is not going to play a significant role in um you know the decision to hire you or not so the the question like you said comes back to like how do you make that first step? How do you access those early career opportunities so that you can be in the position to start gaining, gaining experience, gaining skills, stacking up like real world based credentials, essentially. Historically for the past, you know, 50 years, the college degree has been the number one, you know, credential to access early career opportunities. Um, if you're, you know, many young people, especially those that like have a certain kind of ambition, have that growth mindset, like they're extremely dissatisfied with college as being that like number one kind of career gatekeeping um, yeah. option that they have to have to walk through. Um, if you're, so my question is like, if you're 18 to 20, you're, you know, you have that growth mindset, you're intellectually curious, you want to do kind of big things with your career, but one, you don't know exactly what you want to do specifically. You haven't identified like what specific career paths are most interesting to you, seem to be like the best fit for you. And two, you don't have a lot of professional experience, so you can't access those, you know, kind of higher, higher career opportunities quite yet. And three, like you, you don't have formal credentials either, like. I, speaking about meaningless uh, credentials, like high school degree is absolutely meaningless. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're you're 18 to 20. You know you want to do big things, but you're not quite sure what direction to get started in, and you don't feel like you have either the formal in or informal credentials with like schooling or experience to like actually pitch yourself to companies. Be like, hey, this is the value I can create for you. Like. From a first principles perspective, like how would you even get that like career journey started? Yeah, so there are, here's something that, that I know that I, I probably the average 17 year old, maybe you don't think about it in these terms. And so um, this doesn't seem intuitive if you're, you know, if you're just starting out and you're thinking about like, how do I, how do I go access this pool of opportunities that everybody has told me are reserved for people who have college degrees? Um, First of all, there are things that you can do that are going to make you um, forget about the signal for a second. They're going to actually make you more capable. Um, actual work experience. It doesn't have to be professional work experience. It doesn't have to be um, even relevant work experience, just work experience. Employers, like, like the more work experience you have, regardless whether it's professional or not, you de-risk that hiring decision. Um, the less The less experience total, whether it's professional or, or, you know, hourly wage jobs that you can access now, the riskier hire you are, you, you have no track record. That's the thing that is key is the track record. Like that's what decreases the hiring, the hiring decision is, Hey, here is a track record of things that I've done that, that indicate that I am one, I'm a good, I'm a good worker. I'm a hard worker. I show up on time. I do what's asked of me. I can learn on the job. Like you're trying to manufacture this signal. And before you have sort of all that professional experience, sort of the things that you can access today, like stack those together. So a track record of, of work experience, 
um, whatever type of works work experience is sort of like level one. I think the in most addition to that available work experience to you, yeah, essentially. Yeah, so like, exactly. You know, if, if you're, if you're 17, 18, you've never had a job in your life. Like go to a local restaurant, become a, you know, a bus boy or a bus girl, you know, work your way up to hostess, work your way up to serving tables. And like, that is an awesome year of work experience for you to gain. And like you said, like, there's going to be a lot that you learn from that kind of experience that is actually going to help you to like continue leveling up as you approach more like career, you know, career mode for yourself. Um, but two, like you now have an answer to the question of like, okay, if, if I hire this person for my small business, you know, to run our social media or, or you know, whatever it is, I can at least point to the that the fact that this person has professional reliability. Um, yeah. And they they have been in an environment where they've had to serve customers, where they've had to be accountable to, you know, a boss, a supervisor, and you know, meet like I also kind of understand like the general like social soft skills that comes with, you know, working yeah. in, you know, a year in food and bev industry. Yeah, and and so just to kind of continue on that, I think you point out a good point. Uh, you make a good point here that it, that's worth like unpacking a little bit. So you start at busboy, you work your way up to hostess, you work your way up to waiting tables. So in addition to just work experience of any kind, that's like level one on the signal you're building. So it's like evidence of work, work ethic and actual experience. Level two is like evidence of growth. Like those promotions over time show that you were improving in the station that you were at. Like you, you were having personal professional growth that's sort of required in order to advance up the rates. So that's, that's a stronger signal than just having a job is like actual promotions um, within a job. And it doesn't have to be drastic. Like going from busboy to hostess to, to waiting tables is like sort of if you're not doing that, like what's wrong with you? Like people are going to expect you to have that natural progression um, if you're, you know, you're worth anything as a worker. I think aside from work ethic, though, this same thing kind of applies. You're looking for other ways to enhance the signal. So evidence of like intellectual curiosity. So like, are you somebody who's interested in asking questions and learning and your own personal professional development? Um, you know, do you, are you actually interested in, in things other than just being a consumer? So um, instead of just like being the person who's always scrolling through social media, maybe you've started your own niche interest podcast or, or channel or something like that. Or maybe you, you, you've uh, taken your ideas and you've created the blog or newsletter or whatever it is. Like you're actually, um, you're not just consuming, but you're like critically thinking you're, you're uh, building sort of a, a body of work around your intellectual curiosity. And I think that's like, it doesn't have to be anything robust, but show evidence that you're actually interested in ideas, um, work ethic, growth, intellectual curiosity. The last one sort of at like age 17, 18, that I think is um, a, a big one is like evidence of character. And that's that's sort of a, a difficult thing to signal on your own. Sometimes it's, it's having people who are willing to be professional references for you. So people other than your parents who will like put themselves out, uh, go out of their way to like speak on your behalf. So this could be like a former boss, somebody that's like willing to stake a small portion of their reputation and attach it to yours and like be that proxy for you. Like, Hey, this person is worth hiring. Like those, those combination of things. And, and there are probably other ways to signal character than, than just work ethic uh, or just uh, well, I think those other, like, the, the other activities that you're doing to like gain some basic work experience to, you know, kind of like actually um, like, be an intellectually curious person in a more applicable way. Like, Hey, I'm going to spend the year, I'm going to get, you know, a, a job in a restaurant where I'm working 30 to 40, 40 to 50 hours a week. I'm going to, so I'm going to be like busting my butt doing that. You know, that's going to be my, like, if that's your first real job, that's going to be a really valuable experience for you. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn about like basic, you know, communication skills, basic social skills, how to, you know, handle, um, difficult customers, you're going to figure out like, Hey, here's how, like, how do I work with a team, et cetera. 
And then there's so many different cool things that you can do to apply the intellect, your intellectual curiosity to career discovery. So I think yep. one of the huge problems that 17, 18, you know, 20 year olds, people early in their twenties has is like, they just lack so much context into like what career opportunities are even out there. Um, yep. We've all been in this like school, school structure for the first 18 to 22 years of our life. And so the, like the framing that we all have for like what career, you know, what opportunities are out on the career landscape is at best incredibly outdated. Like we, we yep. think about career path in terms of like, what can I major in college? And that's like the most boring, like kind of <laughs> framework that I can think of to like, start to uh, get a better understanding of like, what are the cool opportunities out there? Like, I think something really simple um, that everyone can do is like, if, if you're 18, it's like, Hey, I want to gain some work experience. I want to develop, you know, confidence in myself. I want to, you know, start working my way towards like financial independence. Maybe I just graduated high school and, you know, my goal is within a year, I'm able to move out of my parents' house. You know, I'm deciding not to go to college. Um, I, I want to be able to move out of my parents' house in a year. And I also want to start learning about career opportunities, career paths that I could become interested in. So a year from now, I have more clarity on that. Like if you think you ha you have an interest in, you know, the business world, if you think you have an interest in, you know, something more creative like design, et cetera, there's, there's no there's an endless amount of learning resources at your disposal. It's like one thing you can do for a month. If you're interested in business, go, go onto your like preferred podcast platform, you know, go click on the like business category and pick like the top five podcasts and listen to an episode from each of those podcasts in a rotating basis. You know, every five days you're listening to each of those podcasts episode by episode, and then write a blog about each episode, like write, your own like personal study notes on a website and just be learning out loud about it. And even if you don't do the learning out loud aspect of it, but if you spend a whole month, 30 days, like just learning, like listening to those business podcasts, I guarantee you, you're going to learn more from those things than, you know, spending, you know, two years, pursuing a, you know, business administration major, which I still to this day have no idea what, what that includes and what kinds of jobs require a business <laughs> administration degree. Well, I, I think that, so, I mean, part of, part of that is like, you know, it de-risks the hiring decision for, for businesses. Like we'll, we'll talk about the business administration degree uh, for a second. Like, Oh, they have a relevant field of study. So that, that de-risks that this person should have a, it gives us expectation. People should have a certain level of context. Um, I don't think that that always translates. Um, I want to, I want to circle back here to like accessing career opportunities without a degree for a second, because I think one of sort of like the next pushback that I often get all the time is, is um, not just like, how do you go get hired without a degree, but how do you make the leap from like wage level jobs without a degree into yeah. cool career opportunities without a degree? Yep. And I think like the advice we just laid out, it's really practical for going and getting hired and sort of climbing the ranks in your typical like wage level jobs. Um, your first wage level job, like there are hiring signs everywhere, not very hard, show up, you know, offer to work, but like, what happens over time is like, if you want to make that leap is you've got to trade up, you've got to, you've got to enhance the signal you're building and, and trade sort of those, those uh, intangibles you're building, which is like the work experience, the promotions, the character, all those things are adding to your signal. But at some point, if you want to make that leap, you've got to exchange those things for sort of those, those next tier of jobs. So part of that, there are kind of like two keys to getting hired. One is like, what value can you create for other people? And what value can you convince other people that you can create? And so the, the first part is like, you're building this signal both to other people and also you're building your capabilities of like your ability to create value for other people. But the second part I think is what holds a lot of people up is like the actual convincing other people to give them an opportunity. 
So some things that you can do to that end is like, how do you de-risk that hiring decision? How do you make it a less risky bet for somebody to give you a shot at a job that maybe you don't have the track record that that sort of um, makes this a no brainer for people? So one way you could do this, um, go offer to work for free, give them a free trial. I think people hate that. Like people don't, they, they don't want to admit that it's that easy in many cases, but like, that's one of the easiest ways is like, Hey, I'm going to make this risk free for you as an employer to let me prove to you that I can do this job before you actually make a hiring decision. Let, give me one week or give me one project. Maybe it's not even a full, like full paid project. Give me some way to, to prove to you that you're at least willing to make, you know, like, give me a shot. That's one yeah. easy way. I, I've seen it. I've seen that tactic work in, in a lot of different ways. Like I've seen people like literally pitch themselves like, Hey, I will work for free for a month. And then on top of that, like I will take, you know, half the standard salary for a, you know, another two months. And then, you know, if I seem like a good, exciting fit for your team, then, you know, we'll have the conversation about, you know, what does it look like for me to be at like a full compensation package and stuff. And then, I've seen it, you know, as, as small as like, hey, I, I've done the homework, I've done my research on your company, you know, you're, you're openly hiring for, for this role. And here's a project that I came up with on my own to prove to you that I have the, you know, top three skills that you're looking to hire for. Yeah. And that, that is such, you know, a strong signal to a potential employer. Employers and companies are so accustomed to, every potential candidate doing the same exact thing of, hey, we post a job online, we're going to get flooded with hundreds of resumes. Those resumes vary in, in general quality of like someone's, you know, experience and education background. We're going to have like, you know, our either like our internal um, applicant tracking system or software, like just filter through these basic ones, or maybe there's, you know, a, a solo recruiter doing that for you. But it's a very, you know, you're by just following that step, like you're lumping yourself in, in with, with most like valuable, interesting job opportunities, you're lumping yourself in with hundreds of other people. Yeah. Um, so my, my, my big advice for like, okay, how do I, once I know what kinds of job, like career jobs I want to pursue, uh, like you said, like using that kind of two, two pronged approach of like, actually be valuable, like have skills that you can bring to the table and then have ways that you can prove to others that you can be valuable. Like what's the actual signal? Um, you can, you can win a lot of job opportunities for sure. Um, but then, yeah, I think even before that, like, like you said, like if you're in that mode of like going from hourly wage work, you're ready to get into career mode. Maybe you have a general interest in like, you know, working for startups, but your career interests kind of stop at that point right now. Like, how do you, how do you start to just like figure out like, Hey, should I start, you know, in sales at a, you know, a FinTech company? Should I, you know, Hey, like I, I, I would say like most curious 18 to 20 year olds, et cetera, like they have some companies, they have some like general career interests in mind, but they're still pretty unfocused with like, okay, how do I actually like build a list of companies that I could be interested in working for? And how do I know, you know, if I should be like sales focused or marketing focused or, you know, customer experience focused or what, what those roles even are? Like, how do you have enough context to be like, okay, I've identified opportunities I'm interested in. Now I can figure out like what skills are desired on the market for them. Yeah, that's an incredibly challenging, it's an incredible, incredibly challenging problem. And I think part of it is like the way we're taught to think about careers is, is somewhat not useful. Um, when you think about it in terms of like majors or career paths and skills and things like that, because we have a, we have a limited context when we're starting out about one, what's even possible, let alone like if we have an idea of what we want to aim at, like what are the steps that are required to take in order to access those. Like outside of college, it becomes really unclear in many cases, like, okay, if you wanna do this particular path without college, 
you know, college has this, these like templated career paths, allegedly, they may or may not work, but it's like, go to college, study pre-med, go to medical school, become doctor. That's like an easy right. digestible path. When you go sort of that the non-college route, it becomes a little bit unclear. How do you go break into this career path, have an awesome career without this like prepackaged template? So one of the hacks, if you will, that I like is, is kind of this, this uh, mental model of like who, then how. Go find as many stories as possible. And the, the fortunate thing about the world we live in today, this wasn't even the case when I was starting out. Like there is no shortage of, of podcasts and YouTube videos and people sharing their career stories out there. And then like going and exposing yourself to like people talking about how they have built their careers, the challenges they've overcome, the like cool stuff that they're working on. That's one of the easiest ways, not only to get inspired, but also like, find these different sort of points in the future in terms of like actual paths that, that you could focus on and like reverse engineer. How did this person do that? Like, what were the steps that they took? That, that may not be the thing that actually works for you, but it's a working model that you can start from that better than yeah. like sitting there sort of feeling like you have no clarity and no idea about how to get started. Like first find somebody who's doing something cool or has already done something that that's relatively interesting to you. Ask Ask them, like, if they don't have, like, direct resources that are accessible, like, figure out what are the steps they took to get where they're at today. Okay, I'm going to start there until I find a better model for how to get where I think I'm going or a, a different target that I want to aim at. Yeah, it's like you want to build your own, like, personal library of, like, career biographies, career stories, yep. essentially. And those can come from a lot of different sources. Like you said, like, there's probably people in your personal network that you know, you look up to, you admire, you know, maybe it's like family friends, maybe it's, you know, if you have older siblings, it's like them or like, you know, they're, they're friends and, you know, they're, they're in the middle of their, they're in their mid twenties, getting their career started. You're 18. Like now, now you have access to real people out in the real world. Um, and then, like you said, like podcasts, YouTube channels, you know, go on, go on Twitter, go on LinkedIn, start learning about, you know, different people. And then I would say like the more different sources you can have for those like career biographies, like the better off you're going to be because like your personal network is going to, um, you know, lean a certain way. Like if your parents, you know, if they met through work and they're like in, you know, the corporate world or whatever, like, then probably the their family like their friends and your like family friends your kind of personal network is probably you know kind of skewing to like corporate career career paths and everything and maybe you know you watch you know watch one documentary or watch a you know listen to a podcast about like you know more entrepreneurial business opportunities and stuff and it's like you know go down those rabbit holes to to learn about different career paths and everything but yeah i love i love the idea of like don't don't try to think about things in terms of like, as if you were taking an imaginary career assessment, you know, that has like all those different personality questions. And then it recommends like, Hey, you should be like working in a warehouse stacking boxes, or, you know, you should be a truck driver, or you should be an accountant and all this stuff, like extremely outdated things. Like try to attack, like think about like people that are interesting to you, people that you admire. And then, like you said, like reverse engineer, like, how did they get to where they are now? And a lot of the times I think what, what can spark people's interest, it's less about what they actually do like day-to-day career-wise. And it's more about like, how's this person living their life? You know, they're, they're in their mid thirties, you know, they, they have like a, you know, whatever it is about their life. Like you think how they live is essentially cool, whether it's like, Oh man, like, you know, this person and their family, like they get to travel a lot. They have a more like flexible schedule. And then it's like, oh, you find out like, yeah, they work remotely for, you know, for a tech company or something. And it's like, all right, that's a piece of information. And so, yep. and maybe it's not, you know, working for a tech company that you end up being passionate about, but it's a means to an end of like, hey, I do value having like more you know, financial freedom or like personal flexibility with my schedule, et cetera. Like start to just, if I think from an education perspective, like if you can start to put yourself in the mindset of like, I am actively studying and learning about different 
you know, careers, different people, you know, their professional lives, et cetera. You're in six months of just like, that's something that you're kind of actively focusing on, whether it's a couple hours a week or, or it's more than that. Like you're starting from scratch. Like none of us, you know, at, at that life stage have any like focus exposure to like, how do I start thinking and learning about my, my career, my future in, in this way? Like you you can learn so much in just like three to six months and then you'll be able to act, you know, with, with more information than just being like, well, I'm 18. I don't know what I want to do, but I know I have to go to college. So let me just sign up for, you know, four years and six figures of debt here. Yeah. I, I don't think this has to be anything profound either. I mean, I, I think like, think about the way that, that, that we all are like the way that, that you are. I know this is true for me. Like we don't aspire to job titles. We aspire to have the impact and opportunity and option sets of other people that we admire. That's sort of like yeah. how we're all writing our own stories over time is you're, you're like fixating on these, these things that you found out were possible by studying other people or seeing role models or seeing these people out in the world. You're like, wow, that seems like really cool thing. I want to learn more about it. And that's sort of like a better way to, to evolve and like, forge your own discovery process for how you want to build your life and career than just like arbitrarily picking a job title that uh, everybody tells you is a safe career path. Like, hey, you should be an accountant because I've heard that accountants are a recession proof career path. Like that's not an inspiring mission for your life, for, for your career. And that's why I think like a lot of people, they, they, they declare an accounting major and then drop out or change career paths or they like go and start a career as an accountant, and they're like, wow, this is boring. I want to do something else. It's like, you've got to have sort of this, this, this bigger thing you're working towards. And it doesn't have to be like, I want to change the world. It could truly be that I want to have a life and career that is uh, enriching. It enables me to have uh, the resources to spend my, mo my money, my time, my energy doing the things that I like, the things that interest me. And like, sometimes I think if you're, you're you're just thinking about sort of your life and career in terms of like job titles, uh, types of companies, it's somewhat uh, disempowering to realize that like your career can be this source of all these other things, you know, meaning, money, uh, option set, um, freedom. And sometimes it's just, sometimes all it takes is like seeing somebody else who's living out all those things. Uh, and then like, just to realize it's possible, like getting that inspiration yeah. from other people doing it. So I think that like trying to use stories rather than, you know, job titles or the traditional sort of like way we think about careers is like a much more useful uh, mental model. Yeah. I, the, the phrase that's coming to mind as we're talking about all this stuff is like in, intentional exploration. Mm -hmm. Like if, if you're 18, it's like, all right, like, haven't really had a job before. Maybe I had like a part-time summer thing at some point, but it's like, yeah, like it's, it's worth you to just get some like basic professional experience. If you're, you know, 18, 20 and you feel like, Hey, I'm, I feel confident and capable of like pursuing a more specific, like longer term career opportunity. Now it's like, all right, like go explore, like what are the best ways to develop skills attached to those kinds of opportunities? Or, you know, if, if there are people in mind that you're like, wow, I'd be really excited to like have this person's life, you know, 10 years from now kind yep. of thing, like go, go learn as much as about them and people like them as you can, et cetera. Um, but yeah, like thinking about like most people, it, they look at college as both the like necessary you know, everybody around me is telling me I should go down this path and like college equals you know, long, long-term success and happiness. I have no idea why that is or how it works, but I just know the brand of college is, is valuable essentially. Um, but if you take a step back and you think from like, for, again, like from a first principles point of view, like how do you figure out what, you know, what opportunities interest you? How do you figure out like what kinds of skills are valuable for you to develop? How do you figure out how to like, what kinds of people you want to surround yourself, you know, over time, et cetera. Like, how do you figure out how to live the life that you want to live long-term essentially? Um, you know, I, the, the, there's no easy answer to solving that, but I think it starts with like, you have to take an, a, you know, an exploratory process to figure these things out for yourself. And just like, I, 
acknowledging that, you know, at the youngest age that you possibly can to get started, you're, you're going to end up giving yourself such a head start on the rest of your life. Like if you do the hard work to be like, Hey, I'm not just going to go to college because everybody else does it. And you're going to be like, Hey, I'm going to go, you know, work a job, you know, figure out like what are different, you know, longer term career opportunities that are interesting are interesting to me? What are different kinds of people that interest me? How can I like build my life like theirs, et cetera? Like you can keep building momentum. And if you do that, you know, on a three to four, you know, four to five year timeline, you're going to be so far ahead, not in terms of, you know, not, not just in terms of like, what's your status, what's your job title, but more in like, what do you know about yourself? Like how much self-knowledge do you have? How, what have you figured out about like how you can kind of like build the life that you want and, and live it out? I think that's a good place to wrap up. We've had a, a lot of different discussion and this is a topic we can definitely return to later and, and continue to, to hash out in a lot of different ways. But like quick summary, like if you don't know what you want to do, find somebody who's already doing something interesting, figure out how did they do that? Um, trial and error is another great method. Um, and then beyond, above and beyond that, if you're out there trying to like build a strong signal, whether you're going, going to college or not, it's like start getting actual useful work experience, build that track record for yourself of not only experience and work ethic, but like personal professional progression, getting a few promotions, uh, being somebody who shows up, works hard, um, explore your interests, get other people to vouch for you. Like you're trying to build a strong signal. And, and that's sort of the currency for accessing opportunities. Actively learn about, you know, take a, like an active learning lens to like your career discovery. Like, you know, there's learning resources or experiences to gain. There's people to follow, et cetera. Um, don't just passively, you know, wait around for someone to give you a formal credential, you know, that has a loose association with a certain kind of job. And that's it. You heard it here first. We'll be back again with more career-bound wisdom in a future episode.